Well, hey everyone, Joe Sangle from I Was Broke, Now I'm Not Here. And I do want to say Happy New Year. And the first week in 2021 is done. And that kind of rhymes if you say it fast. It's the first week is done in 2021. And I hope your new year has started off well and healthy. Now here's why I wanted to record this video for you is because back in November and December, we reached out and asked for participation in a survey asking about money because we wanted to hear from everyone about how the impact of COVID-19 has had on money decision-making and money management. And additionally, of course, we have a genuine desire to help people and help you win with money. And we had hundreds and hundreds of people take time to fill out this survey. And this was not an easy survey. In fact, we had 528 people take time to respond. And I just wanted to first of all say thank you so much for participating in the survey. And as promised, I wanted to send everyone the results from the survey, and the data is pretty fascinating. You know, of the 528 people who responded, 91.1% of the respondents were the primary bill payer. That's right, it turns out those who pay the bills, those administrative, those detail-oriented people, they are the ones that feel the financial pain the most, and they are the ones who responded to the survey. Now, 67% of the respondents said they have established clear financial goals. And ideally, of course, we want that to be 100%. So we usually accomplish more when we set intentional goals. And this applies as much to our financial goals, if not more so, as it does any other type of goal. And so I would encourage the one third of people, the 33% who have not established clear financial goals to get started. We also saw that 45.3% of respondents, they prepare a monthly budget. Now there's lots of room for improvement here. That's less than half. As we all know, planned money accomplishes more than unplanned money. And if you're one of the 54.7% uh, who don't prepare a monthly budget, man, I urge you, go to our website, download one of our free budget templates at IWasBrokeNimeNot.com. Just click on tools. They're all free. And the fourth stat that I saw is we asked the question, which, if any, of the following financial areas do you feel clueless about? The top responses Man, they were, they were kind of all over the place in different topics in the world of money. Investing is the number one. That's not a surprise. For the last 15 years, when we've asked surveys, investing-related questions outnumber other questions 10 to 1. 58.1% of respondents said investing. Over half said wills and estate planning. Building net worth uh, was 48.5%. Taxes was nearly 30%, 29.9%. Insurance, that is confusing stuff, 23.9%. Paying off our house early was still above 20% at 21%. And then teaching my children about money came in at 17%. Even more re re revealing to us was the open response questions. And we asked this question, what is your biggest daily financial struggle? Now, we didn't require people to answer, and it's open-ended, and people responded with great responses. And some of them stood out to me. I would just wanted to take a quick minute and share the responses and then share my quick response to them. Uh, one what response that we saw pretty common was, I'm too tired after work to think about finances. And my response is money can be such an exhausting and frustrating topic. And so you can feel this feeling of exhaustion. That is a real feeling. Uh, stay, here's another response, staying on budget and paying off debt. That's their biggest financial struggle. And my response is, man, there is a challenge because it really does take time to develop the great money habit of budgeting and staying on the train of paying off debt. Another great response that we saw said a lot of different ways. The one we chose is this one is keeping my spouse on the same page. And my response to that one is, hey, this one showed up more than a hundred times. And I used to be that spouse who didn't behave at all with their money. And so I would just want to encourage you, if you're the one that filled it out and said, my spouse isn't really on board with this finance thing, hey, take heart. I, the person who spends their day teaching this stuff now, used to be that non-participating spouse. There is hope. Another response was having extra money and spending it on things we don't need or could wait on. My response, hey, back in the day, I had a horrible case of SSS, shiny stuff syndrome. It is devastating to financial goals. Another response was living below my means. My response to that one is, this is exceptionally hard to do for most humans. Welcome to the human race. I found that taking a longer term view of my plans, hopes, and dreams helped me a lot 
with living below my means. That allowed me to save for the future. Another response was not having much wiggle room. And my response here is when you are faithful with a little, imagine how it will be when you become blessed with more. Think about this, that instead of saying it's a challenging time right now, I don't have much wiggle room, this is happening to me, say, why is this happening for me? Say, it is in this moment that you can learn those excellent money behaviors that help you prosper when things get better. And they will get better. Another response that I saw that was very common was trying to get my kids to understand that I don't have a money tree. And I laughed out loud at that one. And this is a real challenge for nearly every parent. You know, kids, they just don't have that concept of money. And it's important that we teach them and invite them into money challenges so that they understand that money is a finite and limited topic and we must make wise money decisions with them. Another question is feeling that I do not have enough time to be learning everything I need to about money. Man, I think I can sign up for that response. It is challenging in the world of money that all this plethora of data and information and all these people tell us what we should do and what we should not do. Here's my response. I found that it's best to kind of pare it down to two or three voices of authority on the topic that I seek to learn from and I tune into those voices. I tune out the rest. So I listen to the podcasts, books, videos, memberships, and allocated time. I actually take time to allocate time on my calendar so that I can maintain my focus and spend intentional time learning about money and money topics. Another response was paying off debts. They're just, it's frustrating. It's hard for them to stick to it. It is hard. And my response to this is, man, I want to be debt free immediately. How about you? But for me, it took months and years. And there's this in the meantime period where we had to remain focused on debt elimination and it seemed like an eternity. However, let me tell you, looking back now, it is such a brief period of my life. Stay the course, you can become debt free. Another response was knowing what to do with my 401k in uncertain times. Listen, that is a challenge. But it is important in these situations, like when COVID happened in March and the economy and the market collapsed, uh, when it happened in 2018, when it happened in 2011, when it happened in 2007, when it happened in 1998, 99, and 2000. Listen, my response is to not let your emotions rule your decision making. This is where having a money coach and advisor is absolutely invaluable. That's where they really earn the money that they're paid. Another response was having a large net worth, but I still feel broke. Now, I know many of you are saying, man, I would love to have that problem, to have a large net worth, but still feel broke. But my response is, this is why it's so important to maintain margin while building net worth. You can have great net worth, but actually spend all of your money and actually be broke. It is also important to understand that if you do have margin and a great net worth, but still feel broke, to understand what is leading to those feelings of being broke. And I've discovered that this is usually due to having money wounds from the past. I encourage you to isolate them, understand what they are, and find ways to address them. Another response is fluctuating income every month. It's their biggest challenge. My response is that many people with this type of income believe they can't budget. I disagree completely. You can budget with irregular income, and you actually need to budget more than anyone with predictable income. Another response is, I'm a nurse and I'm worried about COVID in the hospital and getting sick. And I think all of you agree with me with my response and saying, you, my friend, are a hero. And I believe that tens of thousands of people who are going to watch this video and receive a note that I'm writing totally agree with me. We're grateful for you and your tireless focus on helping the world deal with a novel illness. That means it's new. That's been so devastating. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Another response is, I'm switching from working to retirement. That is a big challenge. In fact, it's a difficult period of life when you navigate from moving from relying on the work of your hands to produce income to relying on all those retirement investments that others said and promised would help you carry the load. And so I'm confident as you take those steps, uh, good, wise decisions, I encourage you to have at least three streams of income secured as you go into retirement. It's hard for all three to dry up at the same time. Another response was patience. I want debt paid off faster than my income will tolerate. And my response is this. I know the feeling. 
I would encourage you to look for ways to produce alternative income to help speed up the process. Maybe it's a side job or selling some stuff so that you can at least pay off the first couple of debts rapidly so that that debt snowball really starts rolling. Another response is wondering if I'll have adequate, leave an adequate legacy before I die. Man, my response to this is, this is a great perspective. And the best way to ensure this is to live intentionally right now. Remember, your legacy isn't only about money. It's about the love and relationships and the memories that you share and cherish today. So be intentional, starting with today. Intentionally book it into your calendar. I'm confident you'll leave a wonderful legacy. And then one other response is, I avoid looking at finances because it is depressing and overwhelming. And my response to that one is, I have been there and done that. One thing I've learned is that the situation did not get better by ignoring it. And this is why I sought out Wisdom Council to help provide hope, help, and encouragement during these moments of great despair and encouragement. Hey, listen, there's going to be a link in the email where you got this video, or it's going to be down below this video where you can see the rest of the survey results. Listen, I hope that 2021 is excellent for you. May it be healthy as you make financial decisions that help you become wealthy. And one more thing, I have an exciting announcement that's coming your way by the end of the month. Stay tuned. We can't wait to help you prosper like never before in 2021. Get fired up.